Hi, it's Marvel. Welcome back to my channel. The last time I recorded anything, I had all these rubber bands in my mouth, and I honestly shouldn't grind it right now. It's just I wanted to be able to record and talk normally for this one, so I took them out for now. So this is my Stanley Farewell review video. The thing is, like, this can't even just be like a regular game review. Because the Stanley Parable is one of those games where, like, it's really up to you how you play it, honestly. Like, I met those people who followed all the narrator's instructions and got the freedom ending and then stopped playing. And then there's probably other people like me who tried to get literally every ending and easter egg, whatever they possibly could. I haven't even probably found everything in the game. Like, I've read about things and I'm like, huh, I didn't know that was a thing in the game. For the most part, I think I did get all the, like, regular endings though. And technically, I already talked about those. If you've seen my Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe tier list video, I talked about every single one. So in this, I'll talk a little bit about the endings too, but mostly, like, my opinions and what I thought on those, rather than, like, the endings themselves. This is just talking about literally anything related to the game that pops in my head. I'm not even kidding, I have a Google Doc open, and all it has is like, 8 bullet points, and nothing else written on here. So I'm just gonna look at these, and try and remember things from the game. So yeah, there's not gonna be like anything flashy on screen. I'm not really gonna teach you anything, this is literally just me rambling about the game, and getting all my thoughts out, like, out of my head about it. Um, so that way, you know, if you want other stuff, because I'm trying to play through Mother 3, I want to start playing Half-Life at some point, but the Stanley Parable is kind of just still in my brain. I don't really consider game finished if it's, like, something I play on the channel, unless I review it anyway. Like I did with Portal 2, I didn't feel like that was finished until I reviewed it, so... Yeah, this is one of those videos you could honestly just, like, listen to in the background. Think of me, like, white noise or radio. Or if you do find any of this interesting, it's literally just, like, my thoughts on, like, anything on this game. Okay, uh, what's the first thing I wrote on here? It just says, oh, okay, it is an actual thing and not a bullet point. It just says, the game is really about Stanley and the narrator. It's not the flair in video game shows. Stanley and the narrator just mouthpieces. I mean, that's probably the whole point of this game. When I was thinking about it, like, as I was going through the endings, the endings are honestly just so weird with this game. I guess I could talk a little bit about that first, actually. It's like, the whole thing with the game is like, like I said, making fun of video game tropes. Like, Stanley represents, like, the average player and the narrator. I guess the narrator could represent a lot of things, actually. could easily, like, represent game devs and stuff, because he, you know, he has this storyline that he wants you to follow, and, like, the whole thing of the freedom ending, for example, is, like choices don't matter and like listening leads you to some ending anyway that actually no i already talked about that in the other video um and it's weird how there's some endings that are like that that are specifically endings that are just supposed to make fun of things well now now that hold on let me look at a list of like the endings is there anything that's like not a parody of something uh, I guess technically the broom closet and no, no, that's one that's like little Easter eggs and things. Um, there's the endings where you kill yourself, not the ending where you kill yourself, but the other ones, the ones where you jump on the platform. I guess that's like not a parody of anything. Um, what else? No. Maybe the out of no actually the white boy ending counts. I don't know what the infinite hole and oh shit did I miss an ending? I think I did. I I did miss an ending. I didn't get the whole ending. Wow, that's for all the memes. I seen memes about the whole. Okay, so I have another reason to play this game again. Okay, uh, let's see something else that just reminded me of is, um, there's a thing, oh yeah, spoilers for everything in the game, by the way, just gonna state that right now, um, when you get through the epilogue, if you, like, if you're cool with it, because the game asks you, every, 
the time after that that you load the game to play it again, it changes the number for the stamina variable goes into, and then it increases by one every time. And if you want, you have the option to choose a little subtitle. And the whole joke with that is like, the Stanley Parable will never die. We'll just keep in, making more without adding new content. And I just find that really funny. I'm not even on like a high number. I think I'm on maybe like five, maybe five or six. I don't know. And I've been like scrolling through the Stanley Parable Reddit lately and I see people are on like 39 or some shit. And that's just really funny. And I like how every one of those gives you a unique, um, title screen image that you don't really see anywhere else in the game. Like, one of them I got was this room that had a little TV in it from one of the endings. I think it was in the green ending. Uh, it's the TV that kind of reminds me of that scene in Spaceballs where they watch themselves watching the movie. And it gets kind of weird. Uh, this other song was Stanley and his wife, the plastic mannequin, who was in black and white, and it was really cool actually. And then one of them was also a car driving in the desert. Uh, I took some screenshots of those because I meant to send those to my friends. Because I played the whole game during recovery. Oh yeah, I, I the reason I didn't do commentary with the Stanley Parable is because it's one of those games where it's like... I feel like I need to be fully immersed into it. It's a very like personal game. And what I mean by that is like it's a different feeling between watching someone play the game and actually playing it. I could say that from experience, because when the original game came out, um, I didn't have it or anything. Because it came out in 2013, I was 12, so I didn't have, like, Steam or anything. I think I found out about the game a few years later. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't have Steam at that point, I think, so I didn't buy the game. And I just watched other people play it, and I thought, wow, this is so cool, with, like, all these different endings. That's actually a thing. I love about the game, but it has so many, like, different endings, even if they're not canon. Like, another game that has a lot of endings, uh, Nier Automata, for example, there's an ending for every letter of the alphabet. The thing is, some of those aren't even, like, endings, it's just, like, a little gag or whatever, which is why the whole puppet show thing exists in the anime credits. Um, with the Stanley Parable, no. Even though a lot of them are just jokes and whatever, and not canon endings or anything, it's like, there's still effort put into them if you want to get that ending, and I don't think I've ever played another game that's like that, where it does that too, and I, I love it, honestly. Um, but yeah, I used to watch playthroughs of the original game, um, and then I, well, no, I actually didn't buy Ultra Deluxe, I have a friend that was nice enough to buy it for me, and if someone watches my channel, someone would say, thank you, friend, you know who you are who got me the game, it's one of my favorite games of all time now. Thank you. Anyway, um, and it, yeah, it's a different experience playing it because it's like you get to make the choices on every single little thing you do and what ending you get and stuff. And that means like if you don't go in with a guide or something, everything is, you don't know what's going to happen next because there's no story or anything. Because that's the other thing, the game, it's pretty much just a walking simulator, which I never really played any other walking simulators, but it's, yeah, one of my favorite points is gameplay, actually, I just remembered about that, um, it was my favorite points. Yeah, yeah, you just walk around and push buttons, but honestly, I'm okay with that, that's the thing for me. With video games, the most important thing to me, well, depending on the game, but what I personally really like is games that have really cool characters. You either gotta have really cool characters, you gotta have cool music, or you gotta have, uh, like a cool story. If you don't have any of those, I'm gonna get bored. It's why there's like a lot of those like farming simulator games and a lot of like very cozy games I see and stuff on Switch. I'm sure for a lot of people that's relaxing, but for me it's like if you got something that's got no like story or anything and you uh it's just all vibes and no substance. I am sure it'd probably be relaxing for a little bit, but I know myself. I'm gonna get bored. But if you have a game where, where let's say Photo 2 and the Stanley Parable, for example, or, both, or like, no, even just Photo, uh, actually, no, no, Photo 2, uh, for this example. Yeah, Photo 2, Stanley Parable, let's talk about those for a second. Besides Hussein, where they are, they're both games where 
The controls like aren't even much, it's not even complicated, like it's little, yeah, you do puzzles and stuff, but it's mostly like a lot of walking around, you push some buttons, you do like puzzles, the puzzles are cool, but honestly that's not why I'm there. Stanley Parables, you walk around, you may even hit a button or two, mostly just a lot of walking and going through the environments. The setting itself for both games is honestly just as fun as the characters, it, you have a cool place for you to explore, even if it doesn't lead anywhere. I still think that's cool. But the thing is, both games have, um, really strong characters. I'm gonna say something about the music. So I'll talk about the music later for this in a Stanley Parable. But they have really cool characters. You got the narrator, and then you have GLaDOS, and you have Wheatley, and you got Cave Johnson later on. And I feel like if you work with any of those characters, if Puzzle was just a game where you just do some little puzzles and stuff, and if Stanley Parable was just a game where you wander around with no context or anything, I probably wouldn't have really played them so much, honestly. I mean, okay, you've heard the Stanley Parable, you do have all the endings, and that helps, like, a lot. But can you imagine going to the Stanley Parable, like, having access to those endings, but without, like, any lines, like, if the narrative didn't exist, you just wander around and... Maybe you do something, you go somewhere, and then you're in an ending, and then that's it, and then the game resets. I feel like it wouldn't really be as much. You'd probably think, like, oh, these areas are cool, I wonder if I can get out of this office or anything. But without any, like... Because it's not like the main character talks back or anything. It's like, you know, you have this voice. You don't even see them. I don't even know what the narrator is, and he's still a character. They just talk to you about things. They don't even give you, like, exposition on, like, what's happening or whatever. They just talk. You're just, like, their little funny puppet guy. And they still have a great time. Love them. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, like, it has the right elements where the Stanley Parable is, like, very replayable and I don't get bored. And I try and find every little thing because it's so wacky. Not in, like... Because some games I feel like get a little too quirky. Kind of ironic I'm saying that, because like, for example, sometimes I find that annoying when I used to play Bill 2 and every once in a while, and it was like, it felt like things were there, a lot of jokes just to be like, memeable things. But at the same time, I'm a huge Mother fan, which is where a lot of like, quirky RPGs get inspired from. So, there you go. I feel like it's a kind of scale, almost, of like, for certain games, like, with a lot of humorous or like, comedies like that, where it's like, what's too, too many jokes to the point where it's like cringe, and what's like the right amount, where it's like, oh, you know, it was pretty funny, that whole part of the game, or whatever, and then the game moves on, you know? Um, what else? So yeah, there isn't really a ton of gameplay, I don't know why I have gameplay as a bullet, but, I like that the gameplay is simple, you don't have to do anything, you just wander around. And I like the whole choose your own adventure aspect of this game a lot, because I honestly love uh, choose your own adventure games, not games, sorry, books uh, when I was a kid. I didn't really own any, but I'd see them like at the library sometimes, I remember reading one on a plane. I just like the whole concept of like, you just get to another page, and your choices do matter, and that's how the game turns out. Probably why I need to play some things, well no. Because then there's other stuff like Oregon Trail, for example, which I've never, was it Trail to Oregon? I've never played it, but I've heard about it, watched the Star Kid musical. I'll do a review of that later. Um, but anyway, with those I feel like it's kind of stressful where it's like, you know if you make the wrong decision, the characters die and you have to restart. But the cool thing with the Stanley Parable is that you don't have to worry about that. So what if Stanley dies? The game resets again, you're literally right back at the office, which I feel like encourages the player to just be able to experiment and go wherever and do whatever. And, like, eventually the Stanley Parable, like, the way I play it, or how I play Ultra Deluxe anyway, is, like, I went into this one, I didn't look anything up, I just wandered around and got the endings, and that was really cool. And then after a while, and it's like, okay, I got, like, the obvious stuff. I mean, yeah, this game has, like, it's a creative way. Like, things you wouldn't really think about to get endings and stuff. Like, specific things you have to do or whatever. 
like the out of, uh, like I said, out of bounds, the out of the map landing, for example, where you get on the chair and go out the window, that is not a map, I wouldn't have figured that out, because it's not even climb on any other stuff, and you got two endings, bam, right there, or even the baby game, I don't have patience with that, I didn't, even though I knew it was at the end of it, I just, I let the baby die and continued on. And I stayed with them, and play the full four hours and get the art ending. I just looked up the art ending. Yeah. And it's cool, but like, this is an sticking thing. It's not worth it. Now, if there was an achievement, so that's the thing I'm disappointed about, actually. Little con thing here. I'm disappointed there's not some kind of achievement for getting all the end. Like, on one hand, I'm glad because I don't want to get the art ending, but it's also like, I'm surprised there's not more achievements. Like, all the achievements are even just like, parodies of achievements, basically. I mean, like, how many times do you hit a button, or how long do you play the game, there's your first achievement. The only one I feel like that's actually, like, truly earned and feels like an achievement is, um, the one where you have to go through all that shit, but, like, you go through the game, the skip button, the, the closure thing, and then the achievement thingy, the, the machine thing gets fixed in game. That was funny, by the way. The man was just like, how the, what did you do? How the hell did that thing get fixed? Uh, because it was out of his control. And then you get the achievement. That one feels like it's worth it, because it's like, you went through the whole game, you did it, yay, here's your achievement. <coughs> and then you get it. That one felt earned, but the others were just kind of like, whatever. Like, I know I'm saying that as someone who didn't get all the achievements. I don't want to play for the entire of Tuesday, and I don't want to wait, uh, 10 years. I could have done that with the original, actually, if I bought it, because it's been, like, 10 years now, or 5, or whatever. I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna be able to- I'd be 30 if I played, like, 10 years with this game, and at that point, who knows what the hell I'd be doing, or if I'm still alive, or whatever, I'm not gonna wait that long. The game's cool, I mean, Okay, if I did get the achievements, and I got the endings, and I looked up all the little easter eggs, and did everything I needed to, then I'd probably be fine. The thing is, in a few years, I'd probably just be like, oh, I missed this game, it's terrible. Let's play it again, and then I'd ruin the achievement for myself. And I know, it's like, Bumble, you could just change the time on your computer, but the achievement, no, it doesn't feel worth it. I'd rather honestly just, like, I do that for some games, if I just want to get all the achievements. I mean, not, there's barely any games I have achievements, like all of them for, it's only like, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, and I think some short games, I tried the new Replicant in Hawaii, but I just couldn't care, it wasn't worth it for me to go and, uh, read freaking Lunar Tear, took, took me like two weeks and I gave up, uh, those kind of achievements, it's like, gotta do this specific thing with like a billion stuff, uh -uh, no, not gonna waste my time. But yeah, it's a very good playable game, Stanley Parallel, uh, what else? Oh, oh, I mentioned, like, the narrator not knowing about, um, a, the, the machine getting fixed, the achievement machine getting made. And they're like, Stanley, did you do something? Like, what happened to those things? Uh, it, it got, it reminded me, uh, one of my notes, oh, I have some notes, I have three, no. No, I have one. It just says, what do I think happened to Stanley Corker's, and then quotation marks, it says the real. I think, like, there's the whole thing the narrator says of, like, how sometimes he's a character, and sometimes he's not. It's kind of confusing to me what the Stanley Parable is supposed to be in, in its own universe. Like, there's sometimes where the narrator is extremely aware that it's a game, and sometimes he talks about the game devs, like, of the game, and sometimes... He's like, no, this is my game. I made this whole world, and you ruined it or whatever. And then there's other times where there's other entities that exist, and I just want to kind of acknowledge those for a second before I get to my other bullet points. Like, the ones I can think of off the top of my head is, um, well, first off, we got the female narrator, and she's the one that shows up if you go to the little, I think it's the escape thing, you escape from the mind control. I don't know, I remember there's a part where you end up on some platform heading towards this thing that's going to kill you, and right before it kills you, a different narrator, this lady starts talking, and then the ending happens, and then at the end of the ending, the museum ending, and then you leave the museum and you die. Where the hell does she come from? Who is she? 
like, she's also British, like, the regular narrator, and she's also just this voice that seems to control things and talk to Stanley like Stanley or whatever. Well, she sort of does, and then she also talks to the, the player, too. And I think she's all made that in the if I remember right. And that's just funny to me that there's this existence of a second narrator that ends up talking over the other one. Like, they don't even acknowledge each other. No. Wait. Our narrator, I don't think, knows she exists, and I just find that really interesting, and she isn't, like, a major part of the game or anything, of someone that has just as much more power over the regular narrator. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Um, the line? We can talk about the line. Like, I know it's a thing that the narrator created, but I just think sometimes about how the line, like, Stanley and the narrator follow the line, and then the line goes on the walls, the line goes wherever. Is the line trademark sentient? Because the line is honestly, like, one of the most iconic things about this game. Like, character-wise. Like, I think with the original, yeah, it's the line, and then in Ultra Deluxe, it's the bucket, really. I was really happy that they brought the line back, though. Um, I need to see the, the, the confusion ending with the line again. It's, it's great. Confusion ending's one of my favorites, actually. So it's just so ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, is the line... I just think sometimes about how many things in the game are sentient, but, like, don't talk or anything, like the line. Or there's this thing I noticed in the Ultra Deluxe with the printers, where you can find little papers where they're like, ink is... Uh, printer blood or writing or whatever. I, I don't know. And it seems like notes made by the printers themselves or have sometimes the photo start in the office and you can pick it up and some lady answers and she gives you some spiel about phone calls in video games or whatever. And I, I read recently that if you have the bucket, it changes it so your wife calls you about the bucket. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing, um, the, the ending with Stanley's wife or whatever, where I'm pretty sure it's a joke, because it's like a mannequin, and so I see this thing, and the narrator thinks Stanley's going crazy, but there is a, like a female recording of a voice we don't hear in the rest of the game that pretends to be Stanley's wife. Who is that? Where did the narrator, like, is that just like some recording the narrator found or made up? Or like, how did that happen? I don't know. Because there's another ending where there's like a little intervention with all Stanley's friends and the mannequin is there. And is the mannequin a character? Is anything in this game a character besides Stanley and the narrator? I don't know. Which leads me to... What actually does this lead me to? I have... Oh, no, the coworkers. That was my main point. I'm sorry. Uh, Stanley's coworkers. I used to think that the whole coworker story, you know, where the narrator's like, Oh, Stanley's coworkers were gone. Where could they have gone? Perhaps there was a meeting in the meeting room. And it's like, I used to think, like, yeah, it's just some bullshit excuse to get the plot started. There wasn't any coworkers. But I thought of, like, a few, yeah, a few things. I don't know. Like, I used to think, like, oh, maybe they're real, and it's just, like, a weekend. It's, like, one of those dreams where, or, like, a cartoon episode where the character's trying to get to school, and then the dad shows up, and he's like, son, it's Saturday, what the hell are you doing? And then the essay ends, hey, it's like that. Or maybe they were just never real at all. Or maybe they are real, but they're like Stanley, where they're just, like, controlled by someone. But the thing I, I've been thinking lately is that they're actually real. They're just real people, and the reason why is because if you go to the meeting room when you're trying to find all the figlies, there's like a ton of notes left around that aren't made by the narrator, like they're all written on the whiteboards on post-its. Those are actually from Stanley's co-workers because they write like their little employee number and stuff, and they're all trying to find, they're like, oh yeah, these weird little figurines that have them look like employees or two seven are scattered. Let's find them all, guys. We even have PowerPoints. Try to find all the figurines, which I find really funny. So the fact that that exists makes me think that Stanley's not 
that they're so real that, you know, in the way of, like, the narrator's real or the player is real. But at the same time, I don't think they're, like, pawns. Like, how... I, I don't know. That's another one of my points. It just says Stanley, and it's a bullet point. I'm like, what Stanley is really... Because it's like he's controlled by the player the whole time, and then there's that one ending when you're stuck in the ceiling, and he's just there, and he doesn't do anything. But at the same time, it's kind of like a portal where um, every once in a while the character does something that the player doesn't control, it just happens. But it's always something that's like so small that you're just like, oh, that's just a thing that happens or whatever. You don't think of it as like the character making a choice. And what I mean by that is examples is like how in Portal, uh, Shell, that little part when she sticks Kratos onto the gun, she kind of just like poked her a little bit. But no, she like fucking stabs Kratos through the Portal farm or shooting the moon. This is the whole little thing. Or the other thing I like to think, maybe I mentioned it in my Portal Theories video, I think she could have caught Wheatley 100%, because like if someone tells you ahead of time, like, hey, I'm gonna jump from this thing, your first instinct, no matter what, would probably be to catch them. I'm pretty sure, like, I know she's holding a gun, we know that the gun can hold things. The gun, the gun carries her around, even, be I think, before that point. So it's like, Bruh, she could have caught him. I th I think that was a choice. Like, I know it's part of the whole plot of, like, she can catch him, he betrays her, she, he gets mad about it later, uh, is kind of mad about her, like, the whole game about it or whatever. But, like, that was a personal choice that she didn't catch him. I refuse to say otherwise on that. And for Stanley, the one thing off the top of my head I can think of that he does is in the escape pod ending with the bucket, uh, you go to the escape pod and there's this whole little scene where Stanley puts the bucket in there and he like affectionately touches it, which implies two things. One, that was a choice that Stanley made by himself. Uh, the narrator was not involved with that, which means that Stanley does have the ability Stanley is sentient to some extent and can make his own choices even without like the flare control or anything. And two, it means that the narrator wasn't lying and Stanley really does care about the bucket and I will talk about the bucket as well. And I just, I thought that was interesting. So, I don't know, I don't think Stanley's just like a puppet controlled by like the narrator or the player or some little, like, part of the game that the narrator made up because he needed, like, a little character or whatever for his story. I think that Stanley and the, and the co-workers kind of, like, exist in their own little world of having their own little lives or whatever, of, like, working in the office. I feel like that's an actual thing because there's, like, all those little notes, like I mentioned, that appear in the room and Stanley making his own choices with the bucket, like they have, they do their own shit, which means where are the co-workers? I don't know. I, I think it would be kind of funny if it was like a weekend and stuff, um, or that, I, I refuse to believe that they're just like part of the simulation or whatever, they gotta be somewhere. I bet it's probably like, I don't know, maybe the narrator's an actual person and told them to like, maybe it's like one of those prank shows where everyone's in on it except you and everyone, like all the coworkers are part of the whole story thing of like, all the coworkers are gone and Stanley's the only one that doesn't know anything. Maybe they're just gone. Maybe the narrator made them disappear. I think that would be kind of interesting, too. Not in, like, a game sense, like, um, Monica deletes all the characters in Doki Doki, but, like, I don't know. He somehow made them disappear, and now they're all, like, missing. But it means they have to come back to the office at some point to find all the figlies and stuff, because it does... They have all the notes, and they take pictures. 
No, maybe, maybe the thickly ending. Because the thing is, to get the epilogue, okay, new theory I'm thinking off the top of my head. Uh, the skip button is mandatory, and the epilogue, I'm assuming, is like the canon ending or whatever. It's really just like the ending ending of the game. And to get the epilogue, you have to collect all the fig leaves. I, I think, wait, hold on, let me look that up really quick. I don't want to just start saying shit stuff right now. Give me like two, two seconds. Uh, let's see, skip button ending. Skip all the fig leaves. Wait, maybe that's the fig leaf ending shit. Uh. Fuck, wait, let's look up how to get the other log really quick, that's gonna bother me. I know it takes place after the skip ending. Hold on, let me just read through this really quick, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 it's an option on the menu, the other log, after completing the figurines ending, which is after getting all the figuries. Okay, okay, that goes to my point, I knew I had this night. Yeah. You have to get all the little figlies to be able to get to the epilogue. And the epilogue is like the canon ending pretty much. So my so that means like the little figurines aren't some like you know how like there's a lot of joke endings in this game are probably not canon. I'd like to think of them as like what if situations because everything gets in set. That means if the figlies are required to get the epilogue the fig leaves, getting all the little figurines, and the existence of them themselves are like part of the canon of whatever of the Stanley Parable, no matter what. Which is making me thinking, um, my new little theory on what happened to the co-workers is that the reason they're gone in the first place, well they do say that the fig leaves are floating nowhere. Okay, yeah. Uh, they, they're gone because they're scattered around the office trying to find all the figlies, and that's why there's all the figly photos in the presentation, because they're going around, and as for why you don't fuck into them, I mean, have you seen how big this freaking office building is and all the places it goes? They gotta find all of them, so that's why you don't see them. And maybe, to go back to my other thing of like, oh, it's all like some joke against Stanley, Maybe the narrator's supposed to do some kind of distraction. It's like when you throw a, bir a surprise birthday party for your friend, and you and all the little people need to like have the time to get all the preparation set up. So you have one friend go with the birthday person and distract them the entire day, and then bring the person back and do the surprise party. I think it's like that. I think the narrator's in on it somehow, where it's like the coworkers need to get all the info and go collect the figlies or whatever. Or how maybe they're the ones scattered them around, I don't know. And like, the narrator is supposed to be guiding around Stanley on this wild goose chase. And the whole game is just supposed to be like a distraction until we can go and get all the fungoids and stuff. It's like a really, really long Easter egg hunt. Hunt that like takes forever to start. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here, is whatever, I'm kind of having fun with this though, of like, hmm, what do I think? But yeah, that's, that's the thing, the theory I'm gonna go with on what happened with the coworkers. They're trying to find the figlies, and that they're real, and Stanley are real, and they all have their own free will. As for like, the game itself, I, yeah, like I said, I feel like Stanley's gotta be sentient to some degree, and like, in his little world, maybe it's like the sims were in, like, between the sims themselves, you know, they live their lives, they interact with other sims, they start families and shit, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're kind of like this unseen god figure that does all this stuff, but they don't acknowledge you or anything. Maybe it's kind of like that with Stanley and all the little people in the Stanley fair, with like, kind of like sims where they just like, live their own lives and do whatever, but then when the player's involved, then it's like a game, and they just kind of lose that control. It's like controlling your sim versus, excuse me, controlling other sims, and why it's specifically Stanley, 
and the narrator's obsession with only acknowledging Stanley. I have literally no idea. I don't know. But I think it's like that. I don't think that it's just like these little clay people that the narrator made up for his story, whatever. Does that mean that Stanley is like so, you know, sentient that he's like a human little person or something? I don't know, probably not. Not to like the level of like the player, obviously, where like we're a real person that exists in a real world or something. Um, but he's at least somewhat sentient, you know? Is he, is the whole thing of like a simulation, like a video game, and he's just a little silly video game character, like, in universe that just became slightly sentient? I, I have no fucking idea. Maybe, I, I don't know how the world in the Stanley Parable works exactly, because, like, you have the office, and the office makes sense, the thing is, the, it's the narrator just adding that element in just kind of fucks up with everything else, to be honest, and, like, is the Stanley Parable in the universe a video game, or is it kind of like Doki Doki, where it's, like, this little world with its characters that exist, and then some sentient whatever the hell it is, shows up and invades the world and starts trying to manipulate everything like Monica did. Probably. Alright, I guess... Does that take care of my Stanley lit as well? Because we talked about the color booth. Stanley, I feel like... He's just a silly little person that's somewhat sentient and makes choices, but he's like a Sam. Okay, did that. Talking about the narrator's the fun part, because obviously that's like, he's like kind of the only character, really. Oh, I do want to talk about the bucket as well, and like, how I feel about the game. That, that gets mixed in too, fuck it. Uh, hold on, how long is that recording? 36, I don't care. This is going to be however long until I run out of things to talk about. Though I do have to pause in like 10 minutes maybe to go drink something and put on my vans again. Alright, so talked about the narrator. I don't know where the hell to start with that. I guess, you know, the thing... Okay, I'll start with the most interesting thing, probably what I think the narrator is. Because I guess I'm getting all these theories on, like, what are the characters, really? Uh, but that's something I think a lot about. Because, like, let's, let's go back to talking about Portal for a second. Let's play GLaDOS. Like, they're both games that have some kind of like narrator person where you have this being that talks to the main character and is obsessed with them and this is like the only person that they could talk to even though they know that that person will never acknowledge them back with their voice, only their actions. And this is some being who's in charge of the environment, basically kind of like God where they can control every single little thing. but even though they could do that, or if they wanted to, they could kill the, the little silly human, or do literally whatever to them, they decide not to, and they want the little human to play along with whatever their plot is, which, you know, it's Stanley Parable, it's the narrator just wants to do his little story role play, and GLaDOS just wants to the test. Now, the cool thing is with Stanley is you could listen, or you could don't, it doesn't matter. Um, because, yeah, if they really wanted to, these beings could manipulate the little human. To, not not to manipulate, just manipulate the environment and force them to do whatever they need them to do. I mean, if Shell... So, sorry, I guess if Shell doesn't test, I mean, I don't know if she just sits there or something, but... She doesn't have a choice. Stanley, um, I guess with a coward and Nikki do still have a choice, but, like... You know, you're trapped in this environment, there's nothing else for you to do, you're gonna wander around, you're gonna probably listen, at least s slightly. You know, if the game, if both games took place in the real world, and if Aperture Science and the world of Stanley's office was like a building that exists in the world, and you're just there, you know, you could just walk out and leave. It's like going to like, Ikea, basically. These games are like Ikea, where you exist inside of the Ikea, and that's all there is around you. And you're stuck inside the Ikea, so you just have to keep wandering around. Maybe you try to find an exit, maybe you just try to explore, but the world is just Ikea, and that's all you know. But then, you 
down there. You have to find like a speed deck here. If you come back or not, that's up to you. You have the option. You could just leave, and you could go anywhere else. And in the games, you don't have that. You just exist within that environment. That's all there is. So you kind of have no choice, really. Um. Shoot, where was I going with this? I know I was talking about the narrator, and I just I, I, why did I go on a tangent with IKEA? <laughs> Besides the fact that I do want to go to IKEA again sometime. Uh, right, so Stanley has to listen and whatever, but also can make choices where he doesn't. I mean, in Portal, that's like the canon route. When I'm terrible, uh, uh, what, uh, what's, what's canon? Uh, but I think a lot of like, what is the narrator? I mean, like, physically, what is the narrator? Because I used to think, like, when I watched the videos for the original game, like, Oh yeah, he's just, you know, he's a voice, you know, okay, cause like, with Hordo, for example, you could probably think the same way, and he could probably did, and Gladys does some kind of robotic, and she does come out of speakers, like, you don't even really see any speakers for a while in the first game, and the thing is, if Gladys didn't have the auto-tune thing in her voice or whatever, the way she talks, would, would you even know that she's a robot? Would you be like, oh yeah, she could be anything? And it's interesting when, like, you get to her room, and you're like, oh, this voice that's been talking is an actual, like, character. It's a robot. I wouldn't have known it's a robot. She doesn't even have, like, a mouth or anything, you know? Like, okay, yeah, this voice that's been talking, that has this personality or whatever, is this thing that exists, that can also die, and whatever. And that's cool. But with Stanley Parable, you don't have that, because the narrator never dies. I mean, he does get punished with things, the only things that are around Stanley. Like, with the skip ending. I guess he somehow... How, how does he get... Let's talk about that for a second. He's like, you know, he created that room with the skip button. He made the skip button. Stanley goes in, presses it a few times, and then the door disappears without the narrator's consent. And then... Stanley keeps pushing the button, and the narrator just can't get Stanley out of the room for some reason, like, what? And then he's, like, supposedly stuck there, where all he could do is just watch Stanley, and, but, like, is the narrator frozen in place as well? Because sometimes he just leaves to do stuff, and you're forced to keep pressing the button, and after a while he just leaves, is he, like, choosing to stay and just watch Stanley for, like, four hours straight, or, or, like, I don't have character I forgot to talk about for the Ultra Deluxe one specifically, is like, when you do the settings, there's a text on the screen that talks to you, but there's no voice for it. At least I think like, okay, that's just the narrator, because that's kind of how the voice read, the text I mean. But then you get to the epilogue ending, and the narrator isn't there anymore at all. And then you get the text on the screen, and the text starts referring to the narrator as like a separate character. And I realized, oh, it's not just the narrator, like, setting things up and doing this. There's some kind of unknown entity that the narrator doesn't even know about. Because you get to the achievement machine, and he's like, Stanley, what the hell did you do? How did this thing get fixed? I didn't do anything. And he gets, like, really mad and upset about it. Because he doesn't know about this other entity that acknowledges Stanley. And I just, I've just been thinking about that ever since I finished the ending. Because you think, like, oh, yeah, it's just... The game being silly, you set up the settings and whatever, but no, this, this entity that only exists on the computer in-universe that gives you choices and things you can interact with, what, what is it? I mean, I get that it's a computer, but like, it's capable of thought and stuff, like it has opinions and it thinks that the Stanley Parable should last forever, don't you agree, Stanley? Well, let's keep milking these things while the franchise dead, and what? what? It goes back to my thing of like how many things in the office are sentient, or I guess photos is another thing too, where you have like, what counts as sentient in the game besides the characters that talk? Because I feel like there's characters in both these things, objects in both these games that are sentient to some degree, but they can't speak to you. And no, I'm not just talking about the companion queue in the bucket. It's just like, what? But, you know, you'll never get the answers. But I think it's interesting that these nonsense... I'm sorry. 
nonverbal sentient objects buildings I, I think the office kind of counts as a sentient character kind of like the ocean science facility it it does shit the line exists the rooms like there's that pink room that you go to with the apple in it and the narrator's like stanley i don't remember going in this room and this room never existed before things like that where i'm like the building and the things in it are sentient and i think it's cool that they acknowledge the player and they seem to like the player character, I mean, but then they, they don't give two shits about the being that supposedly controls everything, and I just find that hilarious. Okay, okay, back to the narrator. I, I've thought about it a lot, like, outside of this, because it's just one of those things I lay in bed thinking about. I still can't tell what the, nar what the narrator is exactly. Here's my thoughts on what I think the narrator probably not is. I know there's that whole insanity ending with that lady, Marcella, or whatever. Oh, by the way, with Marcella, I think she's part of the whole Sims thing where it's like, you know, how Stanley's coworkers are real and they have thoughts and they're people that exist and you don't see them. I think she's kind of like that. Probably not someone who works at Stanley's building, but so, so it's like a whole ass town or whatever that seems to be outside the building. The narrator just won't let us go there. It's like being trapped in a cursed Ikea where you can never leave and you know there's an outside world but everything around you is just Ikea. I know I can use an Ikea as an example. You probably also use Costco but Ikea is notorious where you can just get so easily lost and it's basically its own little world. I, okay, now I kind of want to see a Stanley Parable mod where it's just the inside of an Ikea. I think that'd be hilarious and I'd play the hell out of that but I don't know how to mod. I don't know, you guys can tell me your thoughts on any of this in the comments or whatever. I, I also want to look into Stanley Parable mods. I think that would be really funny. And maybe I'll do a video playing some of those. Okay, anyway, uh, I, yeah, okay, that ending, uh, the narrator has Stanley say, but Stanley doesn't actually say, uh, that he's crazy and ends up him jumping out the window and dying. And he's like, there's a voice in my head. I... There is no fucking way that the narrator um, could just be a voice in Stanley's head. Okay, I, I'm gonna pause. I think I might have to like go do something for a little bit. I mean, not that it's gonna affect you guys because the video pauses and then yeah, it comes back. It's just part of the video. I'm just saying I'm gonna write down my little note about how the narrator isn't a voice. I'll continue from there for you, like a little bit of time. Video is actually you know what? No, no. I'm. I, I'm gonna end this one, but there's gonna be a part two that's gonna upload also at 10 a.m. Okay, see you in that. We'll continue from from there on what the narrator is. Okay, bye.